So I, I wanted you back to hear this next story because it's kind of it, it really talks about their heart to me and uh, just what what beautiful people they are. So tell us the story at the uh, the Sasquatch Inn. Oh, yeah. So um, so they they're at the Sasquatch Inn and they're going into the bar to have a few drinks. They left the kids in the car saying, "Don't whatever you do, don't go out." Right? Bad, so, bad, bad. Yeah. So it's been over like a couple hours so the brother said look i'm not staying in the car anymore we'll just go the sister goes well you can't go anywhere mom and dad said so he goes i don't care i gotta get out right and but we'll stay close to the car so it's just right behind the sasquatch in there's a little creek or something so you know they're down up the creek and they're they're looking at the rocks and playing in the creek and uh he said, oh, I felt something looking at me. And he turned, and there was a huge Sasquatch looking down. But he, they said that he was so, he felt so sorry for them. And they were scared because they, they liked that feeling that someone cared for them, right? Yeah. That, that was a feeling of intense caring and he felt sorry for he goes they always feel sorry for us right like, like you know he, and he smiled and like he kind of said to them in the in the mind like speak sort of thing that everything yeah. will be okay don't worry i'll watch over you until your parents come right wow he was like a babysitter <laughs> so he just stood just very quiet and watched them play and they felt safe right because they were kind of scared like what if what if you know we're going to get in trouble blah or are we doing the right thing but they felt very safe and secure like he's a big brother babysitter and they thought well they they weren't they weren't scared they thought this is normal like the, the this it's a normal it's not paranormal it's just normal like a guy came and he was so nice to us. How old were they? Oh, they were probably around six and seven around that. Okay. Yeah. And so finally, the parents come. And when the Sasquatch leaves, the parents come. So the parents didn't see the Sasquatch. And they got mad. What are you doing? Well, they go, thank God you are back because um it, you know someone else have to look after us because you and dad won't they go who's that somebody well a big man you know with hair a hairy man but he was really nice and he really cared about us and uh, i think that was the last time they ever did that the parents <laughs> <laughs> they like he really you know, cared about it yeah. You know, I think we should look after our kids. You know, we go, they go, who's this man? They go, and they told the parents, like, big hair and all, but they thought maybe it was a hippie or, uh, you know, some guy living in the woods. And yeah. Uh, and they, well, they were right. It was some guy living in the woods. Yeah. 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 So that was a, uh, what an experience, though. We, and then when they grew up, they go, yeah, we saw what we saw. No doubt about it. Right? That's That That just, like I said, that just speaks to the heart of these amazing people. That's just such a beautiful story. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I know that I know that Sasquatch in. As a matter of fact, every time I go up there, it's in like Chehalis area, right? Yeah. Every time I go up there, pretty much I get a real good energy greeting kind of feeling like the, the, the Sasquatch are very receptive up there. Other than my clan, I think I felt them more up there than anywhere. And uh, I think that just actually right behind that, that inn is where the, the elders sometimes go and they have ceremonies and whatever and, they, and for the Sasquatch and stuff. So that's kind of ironic that they were right there in that exact spot. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what I heard that there is ceremony like once a year and they put out a lot of food. And this girl, lady was telling me like young native 
woman and she said, you used to hear them howl a lot more, but now a lot more logging and stuff like that. Not as much, but they're still up there. But she said they put out this big feast and her grandma said, shh, they're coming. And you hear big, heavy footsteps and you hear them all come and they eat all the food, not like a bear tossing things off the table, but like a human being eating the feast and you can hear them come out. But the, the native people, they just retreat and let them, it's an offering, you know, <coughs> that's for you. And then after a while, you hear them retreat in the forest and they come out. And... Yeah. Yeah. It, and then... Yeah. That's a beautiful story. Yeah. It's just, kind of, it's just kind of a part of their everyday life on some of these uh, reservations and stuff where the Sasquatch will walk, walk right through the village and stuff. They don't talk about it much, but it's not like it's not like a thought of as like we think of it. It's not like some imaginary beast or something. They they, they just think it's a natural part of uh yeah of their life. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Isn't that beautiful how the Sasquatch came out and cared for those kids? And yeah, because of the, and, and the other beautiful point of it is is that <clears throat> I don't think it was as much to watch out for them because he thought they were in danger, but he wanted them to know that they were cared for. Yeah. You know, because the parents weren't really caring for them in, in, in the way that they needed. And he, he, you know, he took it upon himself to, to say you are cared for and you are worthy and, and whatever. Yeah. And that's kind of beautiful. That whole thing is just that lesson there is kind of beautiful. So did mm -hmm. the parents... Go ahead, even though, even though the even though the the uh, the kids probably drove their parents to drink, and they're trying to get away from them for a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they still loved them, but they just needed a break, have a couple of drinks. So yeah. you talk? Do you talk to these kids specifically, or you heard about it? Um, I used to have um, the Julianne, my friend. It was, God, it was one of her family, uh, I think it was her mom or dad or something like that. We're talking, yeah, she used to come over here, had paranormal meetings once a month and talk about everything from Sasquatch to aliens to ghosts. And because uh, it all feeds off each other, I think. It all is interconnected. Because you'll find that you talk to something about something and it branches off to something else. And it's like a big giant picture. It's like, wow. It's like, and when I had these meetings, the vibe was so high. It was like, whoa. It took me a couple hours to come down off the adrenaline, you know? Because, uh, oh wow, that's a whole, whole ball game in itself. All these meetings that, that I had. Yeah. What, all, what else did you have on your list that you wanted to talk about? We still got to get into that amazing sea serpent story because I think that's just pretty incredible. Yeah. But what else did you have on your list that you wrote down? Oh. Let's see. Oh. Uh, you heard about the five Suzanne story. Uh... Well, I heard about it, but we haven't talked about it on the air. Yeah, okay. This one, everyone, not talk about signs and synchronicity. I have this feeling, <laughs> I always start self with, I have this feeling, right? I got to do this. So yeah. that, day, that day, my mom had died about a month prior, and I wanted a sign to, I wanted to see my mom, like, how are you? Like, I want to see, have a sign of my mom of the afterlife. So I said to my husband, we're going to go to Fort Langley, right? We get to Fort Langley and there's that graveyard beside a wine tasting event. And it was free. So the lady that was doling out the wine samples, she said, red or white? I said, red. And I noticed her name tag said Suzanne. I go, wow, 
my name's Suzanne too. And another lady behind me, she goes, oh, hi, Suzanne, looking behind me. I go, you're Suzanne too? Yeah. No, I'll have red wine. I said, wow, toast to Suzanne, to Suzanne, right? This is unreal, three Suzannes. Then she goes, hi, Suzanne, down further. I'm like, come on, you guys are playing tricks on me. So I went, another Suzanne? And then a Susan came, but her name was Suzanne. I go, hi, Susan. So now, including me, there's five Suzannes. One, we're all middle-aged. We're all drinking wine because they had coolers too. One had, I think the Susan had white wine. The four Suzannes, we got red. Now, part of being a little skeptical or I want confirmation, I said, look, I have goosebumps. I go, you know what? I know this is personal and you don't have to do it, but do you girls, ladies, mind showing your ID? I'll show mine first. I'm Suzanne. So they go, no problem, no problem. I go, because what a coincidence. We're all around the same age. We're all drinking, except one has white wine, all red. And we're all Suzanne. There's something I'd like, five Suzannes in one place at one time. That's not uh, normal. <laughs> it, like, That's not normal. I one, when it came to two, I didn't believe it. When it came to five of us, I'm like, oh, well, okay, let's show your ID so that we all get the ID. I said, so we all have our IDs and we take your ID and we're all looking and we're in a circle, right? The five of us, Suzanne, 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 Suzanne. Oh, what? Oh, are in our BC ID. I went, oh, and we're all from BC. I went, oh my God. And they go, ah, like I thought this was spectacular. And all of a sudden, when we slammed our IDs together, the in the graveyard, they had the tent. I guess a big wind from the graveyard came and blew the tent right up in the air, like 50 feet in the air. It was floating. 50 feet. Yes. <laughs> what? That would like blow it over a house. It was like gusts. It was you mean out of, uh, from from nothing to a fifty to a, a gust that strong? Yes. Wow. I would hold on to you like I was like whoo. It was like a movie. It's like I, you can't even use. Uh, if I watch this on a movie theater, I go, well, that's really you know far fetched, but. And we all had, it was, and we all had goosebumps and what, whoa, I'm a, I go, thanks mom. That was the sign I needed, right? That was, cause I asked <laughs> for the sign of my mom. No, thanks. Your mom's got some power to pick up a, 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 a one of those tents that they put over gray is 50 feet in the air. Was it, was <laughs> it like tacked into the, it, was it like, like a tent? Was it tacked in or pegged into the ground or whatever? Or, yeah, you ever, you ever, Brian, you, yeah. ever see, you ever see those uh, those uh, funerals where they they'll put up a big tent and everybody can stand around and yeah, 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 yeah. But it <laughs> literally went fifty feet up in the air. Yeah. Wow. It, it, and then there was no other wind after that. Like that was just that well, that, one gust when we slammed our IDs together. It was like, wow. Well, that's normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I kidding. said, well, oh cheers to Suzanne. Look at you all had a free one ounce wine, right? The uh, sample wine sampler. So we all went, cheers. <laughs> I was like, wow. I said to my husband, can you believe that? He goes, no, that's, that's a popular name. I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's beyond this, like, come on. He goes, yeah, that was, that's a lot. Okay. So I mean, you're you're very in tune and psychic and used to this kind of stuff. Although something like that, kind of hard to get used to that. But what did the other four ladies do? Were they like amazed? We were, or they? We were all amazed, and we're all looking at our IDs. Like, like I, I go, but you know, I was really happy because some people are so private, or they don't see it, or they don't, they think it's too freaky. But they all were amazed and I go 
the power like it was like wow i mean you talk about the odds what are the odds of five Suzanne's uh and the gust of wind and they all were uh except um okay with showing their id because you know no one got offended right because yeah. this you never know and i asked for their permission i says wow i'm a believer man well i seen yeah. all the names and i got proof it was like you can't even make this stuff <clears throat> no i mean the odds of them being five suzannes is beyond astronomical but the other thing is is it kind of reminds me of some of my experiences where there'll be an, a, a set of events set up you know and, and and like i had them with two or three different people all meet in one place just for the sake for the for the purpose of showing you magic or whatever like this and so it almost it this seems like a classic setup between all five of you that you're all guided there just for that specific event to occur to show you you know to show you you know like the potential of the magic in the world. Yeah, who, who knows what's going on on the other side? You think your mom got out there and, and woke all those girls up to come out to, you know, and, or, or, or the Sasquatch were doing you a favor and then and when all of y'all got together, they went, they just blew the, the fence, you know, who knows, man? Because they got to control the elements of the of the wind and get the people there. That's like yeah. a lot of stuff going on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, I, I you know what I it was such a high like wow like wow it's like holy it was like oh I, I'm even getting even my adrenaline right now it's like right off the charts just talking about it it's like I and the confirmation and I'm like thanks mom mom I don't know I was just like they work in mysterious ways you know yeah yeah, I got a story in my book that's, and I'm not going to get into the story because I've told it before and it's too long. But anyway, when you read my book, if you read it, yeah. that there's one that's very similar to that in the fact that it's kind of, I don't really want to get into it because it'll do a discredit to just skip over bits. But I will say one thing. So I'm talking about, we had a Sasquatch experience. A bunch of people came together. Uh, that's kind of like really watering it down. But anyway, I'm talking about how they can remove pictures off a camera, right? The yeah. Sasquatch or add pictures or add images after the fact. And uh, and there's way more to this than that. So I don't want to. But anyway, so I, I told this guy, well, show this fella who we were with talking to, who was also involved. And we're all brought together that the, the picture that we took today that started everything. And so he's looking on his camera. I, I'm just saying this, right? And the picture's gone. It's removed. <laughs> and every other picture was there. And it's like it was all, you know, little clues all the way along, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and incidentally, <laughs> they, they put another picture on after the fact, too. They added a picture where the one was removed uh, about an hour later on the camera. So, yeah, wow. I mean, just incredible stuff. Yeah. But it, it, it reminds me of your story, how they how they bring a bunch of different people together to to illustrate magic or to, or to, to teach a lesson or, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, the saying, ask and you shall receive, Yeah, you know, even you just put but it all, the, all those other ladies, they got stories too. I mean, who knows what they were thinking? You know what I mean? Well, they, they might've been asking something too, who knows? Or, 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 it, yeah. it had to impact them as, as well as it did because everybody could take it personally it would have had to i would almost say for sure beans that, 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 that there was something for them there they weren't just random players in it you guys should have had these guys should all took your names down and had a suzanne reunion every year <laughs> you know and, you know you know what we i think we were so like the, when the tent blew up they were so worried that was going to go on the street you know the the major road in fort langley right because there's a lot of traffic <laughs> they were worried about the tent was going to go in oncoming traffic because it's a big tent right it was like <laughs> it was so yeah. when this thing happened everyone was looking at the tent oh my god look at it it's flying in the air it's like i think that kind of i guess that, ended that, the session that, right that cannot, Our, that cannot happen that that cannot happen naturally you know obviously 
Well, You're not half, but from no wind or, or very little wind to a tent flying 50 feet. I mean, that's supernatural confirmation. I mean, that's that's beautiful. Stuff. Well, it, you know, another way of looking at it is maybe your mom forgot what you looked like. So she had to get all the Suzannes and <laughs> in the in, in BC. <laughs> that's just a funny way of looking at it, right? But she didn't yeah. know. So she was get all the Suzannes. We'll just give them, you know, yeah. one of them got to be right. If, if nothing else had to happen. Just the fact that there were five Suzannes together is like beyond beyond belief. And you know, I'm so happy I asked for their ID because it made it that much more cementing and confirming the moment, right? I mean, yeah. you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, personal to show your ID, like, you know, but I said, yeah. I go, but they wanted to see too because they were as amazed as I was. Yeah, okay, no problem. I want to see your ID or your ID. And we're like, but the moment we showed the ID, that's when the tank went poof. It was like, wow. So, like, so the ID, did it blow away too? No, we had it in our hands. See, that, that, that's, that's crazy because how, how, how did the wind come up from the ground? Because the tent went up, right? Yeah. You would have thought like, the ID and everything would have went flying, and no, everything else didn't. It was, I mean, our hair kind of went up because it went from underneath us and up. It was like from the graveyard underneath us and poof. But my mom wasn't buried at that graveyard, but I kind of just, I always like graveyards, and you know, I've always, um, you know. I like looking at the history and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You like, you I, like I, graveyards and wine, so it was the perfect yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the combo. <laughs> I I especially like some of the old uh, the old yeah. graveyards, you know, like yeah, from the old ghost towns and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. We ever at that place? You, what, I'm trying to think of that ghost town way up in the interior, and they have a graveyard up there with all the and some famous people. I think. Uh, Fraser, the explorer Fraser, I think his grandson or his son's there or something, and yeah, it was a, it was a gold mine town. Do you know the one <laughs> I mean? It's famous. There's there's quite a few ghost towns. A lot of them have deteriorated, you know, over the years. Yeah, but I know there is. I just forgot the name of it, but up in the interior somewhere, you know. I can't remember the name. I, I do know the name of it, but I can't think of it right now. Why don't you show us that? Uh, tell us that story about the uh, the thing that, that that appeared by your by your truck when you're asking for a confirmation and maybe grab it. Yeah, can you wait a minute? I'm gonna go grab. It. I just gotta go to the washroom. Absolutely, we'll we'll, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll sing some musicals while you're gone. Okay, you do that. But don't don't show us it until you you get to the part though. Okay, we gotta build up the suspense. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll be back in two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty wild stuff, eh, Beans? Pretty wild stuff, you know, but it is like, this is a psychic world, you know, we got to adjust to the fact that uh, wild things happen and there's a world right next to us that's just as big yeah. as ours. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, I'm, uh, surprised, I'm surprised that there's not more bleed over. Seems like there should be a lot of people on the other side who like to play tricks and like to... Uh, you know, give their loved ones a little thrill, you know. Uh, I'm surprised there's not more of that stuff going on. It seems like uh, everybody pretty much stays in their own lane. Well, I, I had an experience with my father when he passed, which was kind of cool. Very, very uh, heartwarming and, you know, like knowing that he was fine. Uh, he had a problem with his will and, and stuff and and uh, his paperwork or whatever. So for whatever reason, and, and you know, like he was in Florida and, and my sister and I were in Canada. So anyway, I, I don't want to sound cold when I say this because it, it kind of makes me out even thinking about it, but they had to put him on ice for a while until they got everything, everything settled down, right? So my sister had a candle burning in her house and she said she was going to, and, and she was going to keep it burning until uh, until he was cremated. That's what they were waiting for when everything was was uh, resolved. 
So that very day, when everything was finally resolved and he was cremated, uh, I had I was laying in bed and I had a a, a, a man a, a scent of a, a man's cologne come and visit me in the room just at, just when he was just at the exact time he was being cremated. Wow, uh, I believe it. And, I believe that. And and my sister's candle. I don't know how you keep a candle going that long, but I guess there's candles like that that she had had. Uh, burning for a month or something extinguished on its own at that exact time too yeah well they have so, they have votive candles you know they're, they're what kind of sit in a glass jar and those things will burn for about a week okay well i don't know what kind of candle she had but you know he gave us both the the thumbs up that he was okay and he was moving on and uh you never seen those votive candles where, where it's like in the glass jar it usually has a little picture of a saint on the side of it and then, you know, that's what it is. It's for like devotion and, you know. I'm not really devoted. <laughs> I, I know what you mean, but I don't know if I've seen one or not. Yeah, well, you don't have, you don't have like a Latin community. Well, I've been in, in Miami and wherever there's Latin people, they have those, they, that's like a big thing because they all have altars in their house for. All right. Yeah. All righty. All right. <laughs> All right. Business taken care of? Business taken care of. <laughs> okay, let's hear this story then. This is pretty okay. cool too. Here's my advice to people if you want something to happen. I always notice, set, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> ask, I mean, within context, right? Um, and believe in it. Believe it's going to happen and don't worry about how it's going to happen or when. Just throw it out to the universe. So, this is what happened. I said, You know, I really want to sign a Sasquatch. And we're on our way out to, I think it was the Harrison campsite. Forgot which one it was called. I was out in Harrison, anyways. And I said, I want a sign a Sasquatch. I would like a sign a Sasquatch. So we're in the car and we stop and George says, we got to sign in. I says, okay. And the minute I open up my door, I look on the grass and I find this. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. And it's what is, wood. What is that? Is that like a kid's toy? What is that? It's made out, made out of wood. Yeah. Well, I thought turn it at an angle because I, I like it more like a next. Yeah. That's yeah, all. Like that. Yeah. It was about that thick. It's made out of wood, right? And I went, wow. Right? Like it could be that way or that way. So I thought it, it X marks the spot. That was the thought I got. X marks the spot. There's your sign. And it was like you, right but, out but, my door. But you knew immediately when you saw it that that was your answer? Yeah. The X marks the spot. And what does that mean? You, and I said, well, I asked for a sign. But then I thought, well, maybe a Boy Scout carved it and they left it there. But so I says, I want confirmation. So, you know. Me being a little 10% skeptical, I would like a little bit of confirmation. So I said, well, let's rule out some stuff. There was no garbage. There were no other trail of anything, like of maybe Boy Scouts, or there was a little expedition going, like someone, a pop or a cup or nothing, or garbage, a piece of paper. It was just like, a, it was like, yeah, I was like meant for me because it wasn't on my husband's side. It was right. As soon as I opened up the door outside of the Harrison forest, right on the grass. And I went, yep. X marks the spot. That's, that's all I can say. And I was like, wow, I got my sign. Yeah. At first I was like, Ah, uh, yeah, like I said, it, it could have been somebody who carved it that was, you know, got to rule things out sort of thing, right? But then I thought, 
well, that's kind of coincidental that you asked for something and you know yeah. if someone makes their present they mark an x right like i've been here or you know what i mean or well sasquatch make big x's in the woods well you know what i wanted to make a couple points you know you never seen the big x's in the woods pictures of the big x's in the woods there were the... the glyphs yeah no they're, they're they're up in the tree they, they go up in the trees they're 100 feet tall some of them but that's oh. a glyph in a way too yeah, Kinda. I never it's thought of book. it. Yeah, they're crossed, and I never thought of it as an axe. Like, you know, now that you say it, it's so simple. Brian calls it a uh, friendship welcome or something. What do you call those things? Those big the big axes? Well, I gotta I gotta clarify. And and they've proven this to me over time. So it, it it's how it is with me. I can't talk for anyone else, but with me, if I come up with a meaning for, for what the symbol means, and I'm talking about a bunch of different ones, not just axe. I'm talking like H, Y, all, A, all kind. If I come up with a meaning for it, they will communicate with, to me according to that meaning. And I've proven it to myself by looking back at my pictures that they were already communicating with me according to that meaning years before I came up with it. And that's, I'm not, I'm not even joking. That's a fact. Okay. Well, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's just a fact. It's just so obvious. But this is what I'm thinking. Because I, I know that the X for me means friendship welcome. The fact that you found it, and they would already know that you were going to meet me. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be on their show. No, no, I'm serious. I honestly believe that that's how they work. I honestly believe that that they could have left that particular symbol because I would be able to tell you that it meant friendship <laughs> welcome I'm gonna when, when we talked about it. And I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even joking. I, that that's exactly well, those, how they. Those work. big X's are all over the world, all over the United States. So, it's, if you, it's if like, you want to, if you want to see if Scott Swatch is in the area, you look around for those big X's, and you know that that's that's their territory, and that that was like a personal one for you. Yeah, I mean, and they the other thing is interesting is that they is that it was right where you opened up the door, and that's not the first <laughs> time I've heard that. <laughs> yeah no no exactly i'm not even being funny that's how that's how detailed and how much they know the interconnected nature of us and who's going to meet what and who's going to introduce and who's going to open up somebody's journey and how everything is connected i honestly believe that that because i know what that meaning was that that's exactly what they left you and that i would be able to tell you one day and that and that it would would fit together for you well thank you because that's another confirmation like because i always wonder i go i knew in my heart that it is a sign and i found it so awe in awe that i kept it i go i'm keeping this right this is special this is for me and this has been 10 years now right and i have it yeah. on my bedside and um yeah so here you are synchronicity like it's pre-planned or and i'm not trying to take credit for it or anything it's, <laughs> it's just how they work right i'm yeah. just aware i'm just aware of that so i can see it for what it is but uh wow. i remember what i think it's i think it's a it's a an astounding miracle that you never uh watch that many sasquatch videos uh where people walking in the woods and they see the big x over a mind you um, I have some friends that used to live in Mission, and I did see them crossed over, like, but I never until now something so simple that it was an X. You know, I, I saw how the limbs were bent over way high up, and they said Sasquatch is here, and they showed me all of this stuff, right? And, uh, and I got one picture, it's a bit blurry, and I got to search for it, and in the trees behind when they're showing me these uh the x's and the trees high up uh, i took a picture and there's this dark energy form it, that was there one picture and not the next yeah yeah and it was like a dark shadow but it was big and it was just I, there wasn't any definition, but something, it wasn't in the film. It was in the digital 
camera, right? And I go, oh, something appeared there, right? And then disappeared the next. Or and you know, the, the, the thing about that is, okay, they gave you that gift and, and that uh, that sign that was that you asked for a sign, right? Mm -hmm. And what the message to that is that the Sasquatch are always there. They're always there. They they never really go away. Yeah. I had a dream of one and it was he was in my living room. And he just kind of looked at me and I looked at him. And I thought, wow. Now it came in my dream and I thought that was cool. It wasn't a long dream. It was just making his presence known, so to speak. Yeah. Like there goes my toilet again, flushing by itself. That's weird. Well, somebody must be a female <laughs> because ladies got to tinkle more than guys. <laughs> Maybe it's my mom. <laughs> I noticed that ladies tinkle more than guys do. Oh, yeah. I don't know why yeah. that is, but. <laughs> I think we drink more coffee. I don't know. Well, um, I don't know about that. I drink a bit, but. And here's the weird thing. Where I saw the Sasquatch in my living room in my dream, on occasion, this happened, I think, only a couple times, I heard something to akin to like a 25 pound weight drop right in the middle of my living room. Like, boom, not up in the attic, nothing outside, just right in the middle of my living room. Like, boom, I'm like, what the heck? Something fell, like a big picture. Um, something fell down off of something. Shelf but, or something. Could, but, and I go in there, nothing. Nothing, not, nothing's been touched. Yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, I thought, is somebody in the house or something? Like, and I check the house now. But it wasn't my dogs or nothing. Like, do you want to do you want to hear do you want to hear a quick story about when my mother passed? It's kind of relates to your story with your ex. It's sure. not that long. So my mother, my dad called me up on the phone and said my your mom passed. So I I thought well I have to go up to the woods and find some peace and tranquility and think and whatever. So I get out to my car, and there's a glyph right right by right by my car, and it's. Wow. Uh, it's a next, oh no, it's, a, it's an arrow pointing directly to where my clan is. You know, right as soon as I heard the news and I went out there, it was right, right, right beside my car pointing directly there. The next day I went out and there was another one or something. And I can't remember all the details, but then this is interesting too. And uh, about a day later, I'm coming back and I'm in the car and I get all this energy, like this big time energy going on. And I knew, yeah. I knew they were there and something was going on. And uh, as I, when I opened the door, there was another glyph right, right ex placed beside my my car door. Wow! That, that was that was not th that was not there when I left, you know. And I just so I got goosebumps. Like, that's the right? kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff they do. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! You know, I love signs and synchronicities, and the more you write it down, take notice. The more it happens, the more you notice, like. I like to sleep with crystals underneath my pillow. That's yeah. how I connected to Zoom by myself. I got malachite. <laughs> 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 I put it last night. I said, I'm going to connect to Zoom, no problem. And this <laughs> is... <laughs> Rock, rocks are really smart people. They really are. <laughs> and I said, we're going to connect. And I put it underneath my pillow and I had no problems. Like yesterday, like he says, it was over an hour. And I thought, oh, I was stressed out about it, you know, thinking about it last night. And I thought, oh my God, I don't want to disappoint myself and you guys. I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't care about you, but you would have been bad if you disappointed us. <laughs> and I'm a huge believer in rocks like see the rock facilitating the sasquatch of the Haztec rock right how it transformed right i think rocks are living you remember those three rocks you sent me that video and they look like sasquatch you got those three and they changed color yeah 
You see, uh, the Chinese cooks I work with, they believe rocks are living things. They That's are. why you have them against your skin because they absorb your energy, vice versa. So I'm a huge crystal and rock uh, nut. It doesn't even have to be a crystal, just even a, a rock down the river, right? That's like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember Mr. Beans has got a story. You know, I, I want him, he's got a story about talking to rock gods or whatever. But I want to tell you quick, quickly because this story is a little longer. I mean, I, I, I see faces in rocks all the time, like in whatever. And I remember one time I was in one of those times where they sort of give me glimpses of abilities or gifts that are might be developing in the future or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've had a number of those. And one time I remember walking along and every rock I saw had a face on it and a personality. And it was like they were greeting me, you know. Um, yeah. And it was just an insight into, you know, who they really are and whatever, and that they are sentient beings and that they're living beings or whatever. So you got to hear this uh, rock god yeah. story from Mr. Beans. That Well, that's so true. Like, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Beans. You want to tell that story again? Uh, no, I just wanted to say, yeah, I could just want to say, yeah, that the, the, the first introduction, my introduction to the Sasquatch people. Where they took me out of my body and took me out west somewhere. I, I was in I was in Miami, and had me talk to a, a rock. Then the rock introduced himself as a rock god, and then he proceeded to talk to me for three hours. Wow! Three hours. He went through every <gasps> every step of evolution, and his whole thing was water and rock love each other, and water and rock make life. And then he went to all the different. Then the then when the life is made, the first thing that life does is make more water and rock. And he went all through the whole evolution of all the animals. And then he came to humans and he was talking about our bones are made out of rock and we have water in our body and our bones make our blood. Wow. That was, it was, that was took three hours for him to go through the whole thing. Wow. Then, then he talked to me. Oh, while I was wide awake for three more days, uh, at like a little 10 minute burst. And um, the the le first he said we wanted the rocks got together, so they wanted to give light to humanity. So they made uh, electromagnetism and and electricity so that we could have light. That was cool. And then the second the second day, uh, the third day after I was after I was introduced to the to the rock people, they said, uh, you know, then they talked about radio and TV and the internet. And that's why your little Moldavite thing, whatever that little rock was, was able to help you out with the internet. Because yeah. they oh, had, yeah. rock people made the internet. They were the ones who planted the ideas of the ideas of this inter international one two way communication. Yeah. Wow. And then the fourth, the fourth, the fourth day, the uh, the uh, Iraq God said they wanted to teach humanity about quantum physics. So by then they'd already had the electric magnet, electromagnetism with the water and rock making electricity, and it, it showed me this whole step of how they wanted to find out whether a photon was a wave or a a, a particle, and that right. became quantum physics and quantum physics underpins all the psychic phenomena that there is it's you know what i'm saying it's the most successful yeah. yeah so that's how smart the rocks are rock rocks water and air those people are smart that they're, is all, they're all conscious and what you're saying is absolutely true you put them on your body or if you have a, a connection to the rocks that you know it's beneficial you know yeah. what um you know, Mia, when I had the paranormal meetings, this guy was saying rocks absorb what you're saying, your information, what you're doing, any, all the surroundings, right? <coughs> so I take my rock to my friend, eh? I'm joking around. I love to joke around. I said, Dell, I'd had the rock. I'm tape recording you right now. <laughs> Speaking of the rock, <laughs> speaking of the rock, I'm taping you right now, right? And we're laughing and laughing, but oh, we had such a good, but it's true. 
is it is it's i mean oh, it is yeah that's amazing that story with the rock gods and that like, was my introduction i didn't even realize it took me about a, three or four days before i figured out it was the sasquatch that did it because i was before that i was just walking out in front in my front yard just saying hey sasquatch you guys are around i want to be friends and i did that every day for about two weeks and then i had this vision thing and after that it was like then i knew who they were it's because it's like you know these two mexican guys come and take the shamans right actual indian shamans come and take me out of my bed and said you sit on this rock and talk to that rock and it's like again how could that be arranged what the sasquatch were saying to me was the entire universe is conscious and is intelligent everything if a rock is intelligent and this water is intelligent then everything is intelligent every being every everything is all uh is conscious and maybe higher consciousness than we, than we are yeah and and hey. guess what guess what oh by the way uh we were going to call you uh taco bell right yeah taco bell <laughs> b-e-l-l-e yeah. if you come on again well th that'll be your new name taco bell okay, but guess taco what bell. but but guess what? What? Don't 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 ever say uh, you're as dumb as a bag a bag of rocks or whatever because they they get pissed off. <laughs> I know there are angry rocks too. They they there are. There's some bad rocks too. Like I don't want to say bad <coughs> from a site. It happened to me once. A friend of mine. She had a little black rock, and she told me that she had taken it off uh it was somewhere in arizona i don't know where it was but she picked it up and ever since she picked it up for some she said she's just bad stuff happened to her right mm. and uh, just years of it and so i don't know why she still had the rock but i said because uh, she wants to mail it back right Do yeah right i would thing. say i would say take it back to where she found it yeah so it was some one of the to-do lists that she never did. And I, she's telling me the story. I says, well, you know what, bring it over. I'll bet you I'm gonna transform that rock to a happy rock, right? Well, yeah. she took it out of her purse and put it on my table. I said to her, as soon as I seen it, I felt it. I said, no, I can't do it. I, I can't or I won't, I can't. It's not meant to be. You're going to have to take it with you. I said, I, I was all positive until it got on my table. And then I changed my tune. I'm sorry. Right. And then after that, she did mail it back. So, yeah, yeah it was not meant to be out of its sight. I don't know why. I, and a lot of rocks in Hawaii by the lava volcano. They've got her Pele, the goddess or something. In Hawaii, yeah. they say you're not supposed to take the rocks, right? When I right. lived there, and I That's sensed true, it. Yeah. I sensed it. Don't you just, you know, the fad is you, you do it, but I, I once you're there, you can talk the talk and walk the talk, but once you're there, you know for damn sure that you're not supposed to. You get that feeling now; it stays there. And that's the feeling I got when I seen the rock. Because I was always, I was all gung ho. Oh, I can do a transformation. I'm going to do a blessing, blah, blah, blah. But ah, I seen it. No, get it out. Right? I'm sorry to say it's got to leave. <laughs> and she did. She, you know, and she felt better. She did that. But you can talk, I think you can talk to mountains too. The mountains have this thing about them. It's like, uh, you know, if you if you, you're driving or you're going to a park and then you have this one this view of the mountain it always just has this effect on you that's like oh this magic this majesty this this uh king this uh you know what i mean yeah bigger than life uh, uh wisdom or something well i like out here in chilliwack we got beautiful mountain ranges right and you got the colonial names for them you know colonized names white names for them and it seems kind of boring to me mount mcguire <coughs> all right but i went on the bus and this native man says do you know the names his name was patrick patrick goes do you know the names of the i go yeah that's mount chim that's mount mcguire he goes no the real names 
And he told me what, that's the chief. And he, oh, he's laying down. It was so majestic. And that's the lady. And that's the wolf. And I went, wow. He said, Mount Baker is the man, the husband of Mount Shame is the wife. And, oh, I loved it. When I heard that explanation, it made it so much different than... Yeah, I'm so glad you're talking about that because we've really lost that connection. And we were talking earlier about the green man and and wow. uh, and that, you know, the green man's always got stuff growing out of his mouth and growing mm-hmm. over his his face. And uh, it's just to ama- just amazing stuff. And uh, and we used to celebrate and dance to these to these yeah. beings, you know, to the to the, the, the equinoxes and the changing of the seasons and yeah and and to celebrate the earth herself and you know it, we just we lost a lot of that with this uh kind of sterilized christianity <laughs> just such, Cut a, and dry. such a sterile relig- religion is it's like a it's like mm-hmm. uh mon- they call it monotheism right that is, that yeah. is cut out every other possibility in the entire universe that's what monotheism is you cut everything yeah. out yeah and it was just a a shame you know yeah because once i heard that that explanation i was like wow and now i look at the mountains and in a picturesque i see the chief lying down in his headdress it's unbelievable you look at it a whole different way it's like oh yeah yeah hey we got a question we got a question from um (laughs) From the pork and beans peanut gallery and, and, and uh you know i i can address it beans can address it and i bet you could address it even just intuitively i'm not sure how much you have a connection with sasquatch but you have something going on with them so john temperine asks and i'm assuming he means the sasquatch because this is a sasquatch show generally mm-hmm. how do they choose someone why do you think the sasquatch choose someone to uh connect with and we can all we can all we can all uh pipe in on that not you you already said me no go ahead we oh i to, think you're, you're well i'm gonna say a little something but not as much as like normally but yeah you go seat, ahead you're in the seat of wisdom today yeah. um okay go ahead taco <laughs> bell <laughs> that's funny um b-e-l-l-e i don't think it's because anyone is special i think because they sense you need to be shown a way of feeling that no one else you need that you need to be chosen like it's not you need it and sometimes when you ask for it it comes but when they, they choose you and they show you it's like you need it. Uh, it, it needs, mm-hmm. it's the needing. I think it's that need feeling. Like the guy that was suicidal, he need, he didn't know what was gonna happen, but they sensed he needed them. Like the little kids in behind Sasquatch Inn, they needed yeah. somebody. So I think it's a feeling of need. That's why we from love From love and compassion. Yeah. Yeah. That's my. I opinion. think I think you're right. That's one one thing for absolutely for sure. Yeah, yeah. They also have people because of these times that are that the awakening, so to speak, or whatever. Uh, phone. I don't. I don't really answer the phone much. Uh, <laughs> they have people representing them and whatever to try to you know like the show, for instance, to try to get their word and their wisdom and their their truth and and their heart out there. So. There's a bunch of different ways, but I really like what you said because they do, they really do uh, come to people in need, people who are on, on the, on the, on the uh, edge of despair where they're going to take their life or somebody who needs to be loved and felt like they belong, like those little kids. I just got a good energy rush on that. It's uh, that was, that was really like nice. I like that. Yeah. And if it's uh, let's say rock throwing or something that's more, um let's say if someone's destroying the environment maliciously like you got a story of loggers or miners 
and they're they'll wake up the next day and their equipment's been moved like big bulldozers thousands of pounds or they, they don't hurt you but they're showing you you're hurting the, you're hurting the earth you're hurting me right and yeah. kind of trying to make you think hey what you're doing is wrong right in some places uh, they in, some, in, in, in some applications of that yeah yeah it were they're not going to hurt you but you know you gotta have respect too right and a lot of people they change and they change their minds they, you know what i don't think we'll log those old trees or they can't get help right oh no this is beautiful yeah. no when you're out in the woods and you're taking care of nature and you're appreciating nature and maybe you got a garbage bag and you're picking up garbage and stuff they're going to mm -hmm. notice that they're going to notice yeah. that and i don't think the sasquatch they like it if you're too noisy i think they'll show themselves like you know it's just like us if it's too noisy or too um well it depends if i'm out there singing and stuff and oh that's different. having high vibration and whatever yeah. they love that because they like the because yeah. they're they reside in a higher vibration than we do so and in, in, in order to actually to meet them you know you can't be thinking negative things or whatever and 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 like lower dimensional kind of things you got to kind of yeah you got to bring your energy up and kind of meet them in the middle that's when you have the encounters when you're talking about spirituality when you're when you're laughing when you're singing when you're talking yeah. about positive stuff that's when they come around because they want to be part of that they want yeah. they want to join in and they want to they want to watch right yeah yeah yeah, How about you, Beans? Oh, go ahead. Well, you can also be uh, picked, chosen by them if you decide to fight them. If you fight them, fight with them. Like if you're scared of a Sasquatch, I just tell you to go right back out and park at the same parking lot, get out of your car and and, and shadow box and tell them you want to fight with them or whatever. You know, you, you do that, <laughs> get dissipate all your fear, and they'll understand that. They're like, you know, that's like... Uh, that's a good that's a, how you become friends It's like you just get over that whole fear and the mm -hmm. anger and stuff and then uh they know who you are you're not trying to hide anymore you know so you can do it that way too there's something to that because and and there's also something to that for the sake of teaching because they don't teach us beyond our fear level i've had one or two um test my metal moments but it was just to see how how far I was and what my fear level was. So if you do get over your fear and in the way Bean says or uh, you know whatever, then they 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 will proceed and with you and teach you more. So uh, if you're authentic, yeah. yeah. If you're a fake person, the you know you can be the 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 nicest fake person that there is, and they're not gonna that that doesn't turn them on at all. You got to be authentic. You know, if you hurt, you're hurt. If you're angry, you're angry. If you're sad you're sad that's authentic is what they get yeah true, true yeah well what else do you have on your list because we can't we can't let you go without that you got to talk about the crypto crypto thing the, the magic super duper never before seen except in all the history books did you want to go there now or did you have because are we going to end with that what else did you have on your list but we will get to the crypto oh my list uh well, <laughs> oh wow! If you want to, or we can just get to the crypto thing. But if you have something you really want to bring up, I mean, you you, you went to the to the bother of writing that list out. Well, I have one more thing, and I did tell you this. It's a it's a feeling, um, uh, a per, uh, good. It's it's kind of different. Um, like I said, it all branches out because I had all these experiences. But I'll, I'll make this one. Uh, I just found this changed my life. Um, in real time, real life, about uh, ooh, 30 years ago, I was waitressing at a bad day at work. And I live, I was a single mom, lived with my mom, and I came home disgruntled and I was in a bad mood. And you know, I saw the happy couple with their child. I go, oh, that's a nice married life. I'd like to be, you know, where's my picket fence, white house in a picket fence sort of thing. So I said to mom, well, you know, I, mom goes, what's wrong? I go, no offense, but my dream is not 
living with you for the rest of my life like this, right? And she got offended and said, sorry, excuse me. I, I, I mean, I exist and I, she exists. I said, mom, that I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I just spoke out of context because I had a bad day. So anyways, I get to my bedroom. It's a nice summer day. I thought, well, I might as well go to bed early. It's 7.30 at night. It's really light out. And I'm looking out the window. I'm laying on my bed and I'm just pissed. And I'm looking at my, I had a St. Christopher and cross that someone gave me and it's hanging in the window and it started going like this, like rock, like, you know, and then it was going like this, like, I, I, it's kind of hard, but it was swaying like a pendulum, like first little, and then the momentum and it went bigger and bigger and bigger. I went, holy, no, I'm hallucinating. I'm so depressed. So I thought, oh, it must be the wind. So I get up, I'm going to shut the window, like, I don't want to hear everyone having fun and a good time. So I, I was going to shut the window. And it was already shut. I went, whoa. Like, okay, I'm hallucinating. So then I go to sleep. And in my dream, there's like these daggers coming at me. And it's pouring rain in this house. And it's like a lucid dream because I'm aware that I'm dreaming. I said, oh, great. <laughs> now... I'm being attacked in my dreams. I thought dreams would be an escape. And then, as soon as I said that, here comes a man, uh, intense blue eyes staring at me. And he looked at me in mental telepathy, came up, he picked me up, and he said to me, mental telepathy, Suzanne, have patience. But as he did that, I felt so euphoric. It was unbelievable. It was like a love a trillion times. I can't even describe it. It was such a high. It was like, wow. And I woke up next day. I said, mom, my life has changed. Everything's going to be okay. And, she, and I told her what happened. And then nine months later, I met my husband and I got my little picket fence and the happy married life. So, yeah. And then, so sometimes I question it. Well, that was that just a dream? But my confirmation was that physical necklace going back and forth as a pendulum. That was a cross and St. Christopher. So you put the pieces of the puzzles together you know it wasn't a hallucination and it wasn't just a dream it was a visitation of you know just spiritual mm -hmm. you know but that well, was that me, guy that was a high my... being that's for sure whoever whoever he was he was who do you think it was uh he was high put it that way probably i'm not gonna put names on it or anything like that but it was a high a, a high being oh man Hey, that you know, that's why I think it's like a, lot a Christ of, level, like a Christ level or, yeah. or a, a sat guru, a, a true god man. Yeah, yeah, wow. I it wasn't Saint Christopher the saint of traveling, yes. So you were traveling, that's right. Your, your path changed right then. Wow, yeah. thanks for that. Uh you know, when I hear from, like, I, I like to hear what people's mm -hmm. thoughts are on it. Because, you know, normally I cry when I tell the story. Because, but now I've, I think I've said it so many times. But it was that touching. Like, it's, I just, that high? Oh, my God. If that's what the afterlife is all about, sign me up. It's like, you know, when the time comes, it's, it's whoa. I think that's why a lot of people you don't want to come yeah, back to. There's definitely a field that we can go to that has no pain in it and it's all bliss. So, which is kind of a really interesting thing compared to what's going on on Earth, where we deal with a lot of pain and a lot of suffering, right? And and to me, I think a lot of it has to do with just 
resolving those issues and absorbing them and accepting them and, and integrating them and releasing them, whatever it takes, so that uh, there won't be any. If we have the pain down here, there won't be any pain in the Godhead. Yeah, it's. I've heard so many stories what the afterlife is like, like flowers that sing, you know, uh, the colors you've never seen before. So you yeah. can imagine that. It's like, wow. <laughs> Have you had a <laughs> near death experience or? Well, it, it was like a near death experience, I could say, because you don't want to go back. Like when you get that high. <laughs> Oh, you're like, talking about the dream was like a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, yeah. And I think to get that feeling, you don't have to die. You can just, like I said, well, you yeah, have the you need. Don't, you don't have to die. There's, there's people who had a near-death experience. But yeah, I don't think you have to die because there's this one lady who, who did have a near-death experience. And she was able to go back to that place every day. Wow. Every life afterwards. So that lets me know that. Yeah. It is possible for just a regular person like us to be able to go to that place if we were mm -hmm. have that if we had that connection built in, we could definitely do it. And you had that connection that day or that night, whatever. Yeah. I think that that love zap that I got that I told you about was was kind of showing me what that's like too, and you know, and all the and all the knowledge that we have on that other side, and uh, and you know, no questions. No need to add all that stuff. You got, you so you got yeah, the, you got the ETs, the Sasquatch people, and the cryptid people, mm -hmm. and you got the near death experience people. Now those these three these three groups right there are like the spearhead of this whole awakening of the planet Earth, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, one day I got to read this yeah. on on the air. One day I got to read this. I did a list in my book. I think I had thirty four ways. Because I watched a lot of near-death experience stories. My wife and I enjoy them. And I was, you know, when you listen to enough of them, I, I came up with 34 ways that my experience and other people's experience, although they're not all the same, was Sasquatch. And the near-death experiences are are identical, you know, and there's uh, like, uh, well, there's a bunch of them anyway. Yeah, so it's all kind of- If your life transformed, that's that's a spiritually transformative event that's like uh you know it's the same stuff because you're only going to go one way that's <laughs> up you know <laughs> yeah 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 well we've been we've been having this we've been having this teaser here for the whole show and i announced it on the uh <laughs> on the uh when i advertise the show and in, in a couple groups i think that this cryptid uh uh sea serpent story that you had and and what happened after it and the whole thing and, and take your time let's get right into it and, and we'll end off with that okay but let, let's get into that because this isn't the this is a pretty neat story yeah so oh about over 10 years ago we went to Euculet, vancouver island and we were wheel watching so I got the binoculars and I'm at it for hours because it's way out there. And I got kind of tired and I said, oh, I've had enough, uh, an hour of this. I put my binoculars down. I'm just going to watch the seals around the kelp more close to shore. And there's all that kelp. And all of a sudden, here comes a sea serpent, right? And it's going like that. And amongst the kelp. I'm like, that's not a seal. That's not a sea lion. Uh, it's a, it had a huge horse head, like, you know, huge. With the nostrils flared. It was breathing, like, with its nostrils in and out. And it had a horse's uh, mane, but it had a webbing on top of its head, down its back, like, um, all the way down its back. It was like three humps. And it must have been about 75 feet, I'd say. And because some of it was underneath water at the tail end, so it could be longer, I don't know. And then it was beige and had big brown dark spots on it. And it was just uh, the way it just enjoyed the kelp. And I'm like, wow. And the sun was shining on it. 
It was pretty close to shore, I'd say, I don't know. And deep enough for it to swim in, it was like, I don't know, 100 meters or so. And I was like, wow. Like, I, yeah. And just like at that picture, it looks just like that. Exactly. So I was like, it happened for only a few, like, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds. So that was before cell phones. And it seems so sacred. I didn't even want to take a picture of it. I know it sounds strange, but I was in awe, like what I seen. They so, call this, they call this, they call this uh, caddy, caddiosaurus or something, yeah. or caddiosaurus or something. But it's 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 a, a very famous it's a very famous one. And it's been and it's been talked about uh for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. And it just seems so in its element in the kelp and the beautiful long brown dark mane hanging down, and then it had the webbing on its forehead, uh, not on its forehead, on its head, all the way down its back like that and like I said confirmation again I thought wow it, it's not a dinosaur head because I thought like Ogopogo you got maybe you got the dinosaur head like but what I saw was a horse's head tight horse like not horse's head but horse like now can I ask you something mm -hmm. Did, were you aware of Caddy or any of this stuff before you saw it? Yeah, but I thought it was up at Loch Ness. No, but you not didn't, Loch Ness. Uh, Ogopogo. But, you didn't, but you didn't know it had a horse head? No. N not at so, all. So you were seeing, so you saw something without any knowledge that, you know, that, that, um, that has been reported for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of years. So yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. So the only knowledge I had was, you know, the Loch Ness Monster that you've heard about and Lake Ogopogo. But they always give the illustration of like a dinosaur type head, not like what I saw. So that I was kind of surprised it had a horse like head. I went and it wasn't a horse that swam off the farm by mistake into the ocean. It was, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, but the way the sun was shining on it, it was so like, wow. It's like, I didn't expect to see it. And what gave confirmation was uh, in Nanaimo, I bought a book and I was waiting for the ferry on the way back. And I bought, I was looking in the book and they had petroglyphs of Nanaimo from thousands of years ago. And lo and behold, the native petroglyphs, they had sea serpent with a horse's head. I went, bingo, that, that's what I saw. So, I was yeah. like, you know, uh, yeah. So, now, you know, the skeptics are going to, that's amazing that, and there's more, there's more, but that, <laughs> that that's amazing. But uh, so, I, you know, I, I'm not going to insult you by, well, I am going to, I don't want to insult you by asking this. I'm just, but I'm just asking because, you know, people that this is what reg, regular people yeah. would say. <laughs> so there was no misidentification. You knew exactly what you saw, right? hundred percent. I would take a lie detector test on it. Yeah. Put like it, it wasn't like, like, I mean, cause you know, you read people who are, you know, people who are trying to figure stuff out logically once again the old parentheses you know yeah. we'll say well it's a, you know it, it was like a a group of sea lions you know like whatever or something or though they try to explain it away in some so-called rational manner but you absolutely saw what you saw there was it was nothing other than that right oh well the thing was i, I love seals and see otters and i wanted to watch the seals instead of the whales way way back in the ocean i wanted to bring my vision give my eyes a break to see the seals watch the seals maybe if i i love seals but as i'm looking in the 
foreground for seals and I always watch them I like I'm an avid animal and sea watcher like sea life and that so I observe a lot right so I know what's what I've seen seals and big sea lions you know the head they have a distinct yeah. shape right the sea lions can get really big but <laughs> and the seals but no 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 it, it was a horse's head you know with the nostrils i know i know seals have nostrils but they, these were pretty big it was pretty big the nostrils like huge like you know no doubt about it and because of the illumination of all that light if there was no shadows or fogging effect or that could be kelp no because it was a little above the kelp like you know the body and you see the water shine like the yeah. shimmering effect it was like so how yeah. much uh, you said it was very much like this how much uh, did you see like did you say you saw the web feet kind of thing or, or you didn't i didn't see feet and i didn't see like what's on the picture i didn't see feet or forearms or tail i just saw the head and three humps did the humps kind of look like they could be like this? Yeah, they had webbing on the humps. And they had spots, big giant uh, spots, like uh, no real conformity to it, it's just random spots, you know? But there were big spots, like dark brown. And I, it was so close. And what, what was also um, confirming to me, is it wasn't way out there, it wasn't like a log, it was pretty close to shore. Because what, what, what are we talking? What 100 yards? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, was, and it was deep enough for it to be in, but yet it wanted to be with the kelp because a lot of there's a lot of kelp closer to shore, right? And it kind of gets bungled up, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it was just wandering it like a sea forest. Like it was just like, you know, I never expected something like that. That's another thing I didn't, I'm like, it looked just so majestic, huge. Did, did you feel, did you feel, you, you felt it was, I um, can't remember how you described it, but did you get an energy? Did you feel something? Do you think it was by design that you saw it? Do you think it was a coincidence? What was your feeling when you saw it? I know you were in awe and you thought it was um, um, spirit or something. How would you describe that, that feeling you had? Oh, that, um, that it was weird because normally when you see something like that, you jump up and jump, you know, the, the normal part of me would say, look at that, look at that. But I didn't. I was, it was like it was meant not to rise I didn't want to harm it because it was so special like I, it's just it was just like meant for me it was like I was transfixed on it like and my husband's right there and he's having a cigarette but he's looking in the other direction he didn't he wasn't looking out to see he was looking out <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> so and then by the time I try to get his attention. Oh, well, it's gone. It's already, it dove down the water, right? And uh, I just didn't want to ruin the moment. Like, I didn't want to see it hurt. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to draw attention. Like, I'm, the last thing I want to see is a whole bunch of people with guns and nets and God knows dragnets. Like, I don't yeah. think that would have happened, but that was my thought. I don't want to ruin what i saw yeah. yeah and bean and beans while you're out having your cigarette suzanne said that she had no prior knowledge to to what this this creature looked like but she went to some petroglyphs in the area and and this 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 beautiful animal was uh was part of the petroglyphs with the horse head and whatever so Okay, and it's, and it's so, on this uh, piece of piece of ancient map. I don't know what that map is about, but <laughs> they, knew, they must have known about it a long time ago. I think I think I read this is from seventeen hundred. This this drawing. 
And like she said, they was on a petroglyph from the original people that were there or people far, far away. And, and it had a horse's head. So they don't normally, you know, when the Indians put something on a totem pole or stuff like this or in petroglyphs, it, it, it generally means that it's a real, a real thing. So they, you know, they had knowledge of that. So then, okay. So then here's the really crazy, amazing part. And it feeds into the Sasquatch abilities and whatever too, that they can do. So you said that you went into town or something and you talked to some native, uh, some, some uh, indigenous elder lady or something or. Yeah. And she was selling in a powwow. And um, she had some jewelry, like it was dragon like. And I looked at it and, and I said to her, hmm, kind of looks almost similar because a dragon and a horse head can almost, they got the nostrils, right? And the, the webbing on the head. I go, that almost looks like something I saw. And she said, well, what did you see? So I told her and she smiled. Oh yeah, you seen it. it was, yeah. I go, so you know. I go, it had a horse's head. As soon as I say, said that, she's like, oh, yes, you, you seen that, what we believe in. I go, really? She goes, it has a horse-like head. And I'm like, oh, so that's another confirmation. Oh, okay, because I've seen it on a petroglyph. So anyway, she goes, but we, the fishermen, we're on the beach close to Yukila. There's a native village around there. And she said, we seen the community, the natives had seen the sea serpent. And they're all looking at it, you know, okay. And How, then, what, 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 when did this happen? You never told me that. 10 years Six, ago, she said 10 years ago. No, no, no. The, this story that she's relating. Oh, it had happened, I think, a few years, uh, quite a, maybe years, few years before my incident. Okay. Like she, yeah. So it was still, I think the guy is still alive, right? The, of what I'm going to talk about. What happened? Yeah. So it's quite, it wasn't an old, old story. It's pretty recent because what happened was the sea serpent. So they're all the fishermen are watching the native fishermen. They're fishing out for salmon and go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was pretty close to shore too. And then here, here's the weird part. It, as it comes up to shore, the beach, she said, we were amazed. I go, what? It turned, transformed the serpent figure all of a sudden changed into uh, a human and it had the seaweed, the kelp, like the seaweed, just like I said, that, that seaweed thing. And the seaweed was on his body, it was a man. And it was because the fisherman knows the fisheries officer. It, he, it turned into him. Wow. And, he's got, it, and he's got a wet uniform. It's wet. And he, He's got the seaweed hanging. And then they're <laughs> looking in amazement, like, what the heck did we just see? Like, what? It transformed from the sea serpent, I don't know, into the fisheries officer. And then he walks to the pub and he's in a daze and he orders all these drinks. Like he, he was in a daze? Yeah, kind of. Like, like a like a zombie, you know, like, oh. like he wasn't himself. <laughs> but but they knew but they but you told me they knew this guy prior and and yeah. they were quite familiar with him and he wasn't himself <laughs> okay and, okay and they they go and they watch him and he's got like he's all soaking wet he's got the seaweed and he's in a trance like state i don't know and he's walking to the pub and he sits there and everybody's watching him like, like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's just sister like you know and has a beer and he's like in a daze and she goes we see what we see i don't care what anyone says but the whole like the village was there the, all the fishermen and they knew who the guy was but they're like wow and i'm like now that's a story 
it's almost like a werewolf transformation. No, a human that's, goes that's into a werewolf. Astounding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it makes me it makes me wonder if he was aware of it because you know, <laughs> I I have seen the Sasquatch in human form, and in and in, 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 in as ravens and as owls and <clears> different <throat> things. But I wonder how aware cognizant they are of when they're when they're being taken over like that. So this guy, it, from what you're saying, because he was stunned and kind of unaware, I, he probably didn't even know. All she said was everyone was silent, right? Because, you know, they kind of followed him, like, what's going on, right? And they, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and they're <laughs> watching from a distance, right? Okay, he's going in the pub. And he's soaking wet. He's still got seaweed on him. What's up with that? And so, you know, they, <laughs> they, they gossiped and they went in there and they just left him alone because he was in a trance-like state. They, he, was t- he didn't talk to anybody. He just sat there with the bear. Like, and had another one, like he had to get drunk or something. I don't know. Like, he was just beside himself. Like, I, I, got, I, I need a drink. And just sat there. Just calm. Soaking wet. And everyone's like, <laughs> what the heck? He's got seaweed on his shoulder. Like, what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even brush it off or nothing. He just had seaweed hanging there on his shoulder, just sitting there in the bar. <laughs> And they're like, well, Anita's like, yeah. And we know the guy. She says, everyone knows the fisheries. Like, it's a small town, you know. Yeah, it's not- of course. But like I said, I didn't get any information more because people were coming up, customers buying, you know, her, her wares. So I didn't want to interrupt the big sale. You know, I took what I got. I said, thank you so much for telling me that. And she gave me the big smile. Yeah. The things you see, right? Yeah. Just gave me the nod. You know, the only thing I would have liked to have heard, the only thing that could have put the cherry on top of that story is if (laughs) we had to found out what that guy said about it after the fact, you know, like if he was aware and whatever, and uh, what what he would have said if somebody told him what they saw. That I would have liked to have heard, but what an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked to know, like, what he, he, his eyeballs were kind of bulged out, like, you know, you're in a shock or trance or something. You're just not, you're in a, he was in a different state, she said, uh, sitting there alone, not talking to anyone, just like, uh, you know, a deer in the headlights. Uh, well, right? you know, that, that opens a whole new kettle of fish, too, you know, uh, for this thing to transform either from a human into this, uh, into this, uh, I don't know what you would call it, this sea serpent, sea serpent horse, uh, that could, takes me back to the to the Anunnaki who were said to be half human and half fish. Oh my they god! Were to be, they were supposed to be. They were supposed. They were supposed to be the progenitors of the human race the way it is now. So this that transformation. So and, and so these evidently these these they actually have drawings. I know you can look them up. There were the half human, half fish, uh, you know, and then they turned into these guys with beards and you know, the little person stuff. Yeah. I've, and, yeah. I've seen the pictures on their or the hieroglyphics or whatever, the carvings or whatever. Yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, well, this whole work, we're talking about cryptid stuff. We're talking about Sasquatches. You know, we're like half human and half Sasquatch or half ET or something like that. And then you have the dog head man, which is a half man and half dog head, dog, dog man. And the goat man, which is half goat and half man. I mean, there's something going on here, right? This little thread of human hybrid kind of thing. I bet the whole town that I don't think they seen him in the different light, saw him in a different light after that. You know, here's a government fishery officer, right? Transforming from a sea serpent. And they're like, just I think, and like, whoa, wow, wow. Like, uh, and it was daylight. It wasn't like really dark and they couldn't see. It was, and they were all fishing, right? So, yeah, 
that's and the way she said the story it was like she wasn't making it up she was quite serious the other thing i wanted to mention was you know the house that i'm staying in is like a regular tract house right and it's 60 feet long so that's i just to put that in scale for for people so if this if this from the from his nose to his humps was 50 feet you're talking about a really big being it's like it wasn't just it wasn't like a little you know so, something you could just step over this thing you probably literally could not step over it's so big she a huge uh animal i thought you said it was even bigger than that and you didn't see the tail right yeah it could yeah, be it I mean, 50, 50 feet you know with the three humps the head the hump hump and the little hump and then i thought to myself well how, how much longer does it go on for i see what's sticking out of the water but i don't see the tail end right i didn't see a flipper right because it just dove yeah. down and i saw him go like that take the deep dive down and then that was it wow. i waited to see if it resurfaced right and then i would then i could get my husband you know finish a cigarette and come see but that opportunity didn't happen so yeah notice how you had the sighting you went and you saw the petroglyph then you went and had this amazing story by this lady. It all seems to be like all connected. Is, you know, all it's all... is that all on the same day? No. This no, is so, so there's your sighting, and then, then you just happen to run across this lady later, another time. Yeah, yeah I was telling her about my experience. Yeah. And I, because they had, you know, they had some kind of jewelry that's like dragon like uh, you know it's just they were selling she was selling some stuff and then they had a like a sea serpent design on one of their leather pouches and actually not from her i bought it off another band member it's a two-headed serpent it's called a two-head i don't know the name for it it has a native name for it but it's two-headed and it's that belief all down the coast, um, I think from Alaska down to California on that side. So yeah. it's not that just that band. There's a lot of up to the Eskimo. I was talking to this guy, he's Eskimo, and he said, oh, yeah, my grandma saw that. Exactly what you're saying. Up by Alaska that on the coast, yeah. you know. So that was another confirmation. He goes, yeah, it was like a horse's like hat, right? Yeah. Then you have mermaids. There's like a lot of people who claim to have seen mermaids and they're not, uh, they're not like these beauties like they're in the drawings. <laughs> they're kind of more like a, look like a witch or something. But they yeah. have, you know, they're kind of scrawny looking, the ones I've seen drawings of. Yeah, so <laughs> who knows, you know? Yeah. Now, this is, this is a dumb question, but... Do you think that that sighting was a coincidence? The coincidence with the native lady that? Like, no, no. When you saw it, I don't think, personally, I don't think it was a coincidence. I think you were meant to see it, especially with what unfolded with you seeing the petroglyph and then talking to this lady later on. But, or do you think it was just a coincidence or do you think it was you were meant to see that? I was meant to see it. Yeah, because you're the only one, right? Yeah. Because how, many people, I, how many people were on the shore with you? Just you and your husband at that little inlet or something? No, there were some American people, like a family, but they didn't see it either. They were looking in another direction because I, I was waiting for someone. I said about, I don't know, 15 people were on the beach, you know, and it was nice. It was just a beautiful sunny day and they didn't even see what I saw. They weren't really looking where I was. We're kind of like looking in the other direction. It's kind of weird. I go, no one's seeing this, but I'm not saying nothing because number one, they're going to think I'm crazy. Number two, I don't want people to know that it's there. And next thing there's a hunting, fishing trip going on. And, you know, I just thought I'd do it a disservice if I said, hey, look. And then something happened to it. I would have felt guilty. Yeah, had stuck 15, around. 15 people, it was only you. That's pretty much like a gift just for you. Yeah. Undoubtedly. And it looked solid. Solid as can be. It was like, 
<laughs> it was like, oh wow. What were the like, color? What were the colors? Beige. It, the body was beige. The mane, that mane, and the webbing. The mane was darker. The big, and it had a beige mane. The body was beige. The spots were dark brown, like big spots all along its humps. And yeah, it was, it was quite detailed with the nostrils and everything. Like I go, well, it's pretty close. It's not far away where you think it's a bloody log or something like that. It was pretty close because I could see the detail. It just looks so beautiful. It looks majestic is what it looked, majestic. What a beautiful gift to see that. It was so majestic. It's like seeing that, a big blue whale majestic. It'd, it'd be amazing to uh, to have somebody like Sue Walker, who's a, she's an artist and she does pictures of Sasquatch and of the ETs and they love come and visit her. So may, if you could ask her to do a drawing of it, that'd be cool. Yeah. That that would be neat. She'll she'll she'll, she'll, do it. she'll sketch out and then she'll she'll say, yeah, "Has it looked like this?" And you can correct her and stuff. Now, I can check downstairs of my paintings. I did a painting of it. Oh. Yeah, go 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 and check quickly. Okay, do you mind? Uh, give give me a minute. And no, we'll just can... talk. We'll just talk about you while okay. you're gone. All right. <laughs> Pretty cool story, eh, Beans? Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it, it, uh, it's just another layer of, of the big picture, you know? Yeah. You got, you got, we're, we're really focused on Sasquatch and ETs and stuff. But then there's the dog man, the goat man, the moth man, and uh, I don't know what uh, other things. They have, they have there's a, an elk god, which is sort of like a, uh, some kind of supersized elk, and, and there's deer gods and you know, all these things that are in history. And then there's dragons, actual dragons. And I, I had a friend of mine that I told you about it. He's had like a 15 or 20 year relationship with a dragon and it's, and dragon just keeps giving him his love zap. So he's like, you know, he's really devoted to his dragon the way you're devoted to your Sasquatch friends. So, yeah. And I like, and I like the fact that the shape shifting and all that stuff is, is abilities that the sat we know the Sasquatch have as well. So that, that kind of like correlates to, you know, to, to what we know. So it's, it's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. By the, by the way, she described that guy, he didn't, I, I don't think that he knew what was going on because he was kind of like a zombie. It would, it would be, it'd be hard. You know, he could have, he could have heard from the, who knows how that happened. In my mind, he could have been just on the other side of the beach further away. And uh, and he was just looking out there, and this this thing just came and and absorbed him and took him for a ride. You know no. who knows how it worked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, if you can see it that well, that's the head. Oh wow! So it's you got it with with like a the dragon kind of influence on it, right? Yeah, and there's oh that I preimpose the tail, right? But. That's what I saw, the color and the webbing. So so was it more like a horse head or was it more like more like that? You know, it's kind of like half dragon, half half horse. So you know, okay, you, you take a look at this, right? Yeah. I'm not the greatest painter, but it's not bad. <laughs> nice. It's a nice painting, actually. So if I take it from a distance, you might see it more. There you go, yeah. So, so there you go. So, and is that, oh, but, oh, but you added the tail, but you, but you saw, did you see everything but the tail? Like everything, but this part. Okay. I saw the humps, the coloring, and you know, I should have put seaweed down here or, or the mane. It was kind of like hair there too, right? But that I should add in. That's what's missing. I just thought of it now. I go, there's something missing. And that was like a hair, dark brown hair right here. I have to add that in. But you know what? I got a plastic dragon. Look at the similarity. You know, like you got to. Oh yeah. You know, the webbing, like the spines, and the and so it's kind of like dragonish. 
I don't know. Maybe with all those pictures of dragons, people it could have. Be, could be. Yeah. You know. Do you, actually, do you actually see any front limbs at all? Like, no. No. Just assume that they might have been there. No. No. I think because. No. And I, like I said, it was mostly underneath the water, except for the humps, right? But that's that's what I saw. So I thought I gotta when I tell everyone about it, you know, you say, "Well, I gotta say, paint it, right?" But if you've never seen anything like it, it's hard to have a reference, right? Except the petroglyphs, but that's more crude, right? That's what, the, did. What, what, what did the petroglyphs? Did it show the full body? Yeah. What did, what did it have? Did it have like the big plesiosaurus kind of fins or did it have like legs? I think from what I've seen in the petroglyphs, it was more like a snake-like body, a dr the horse head and the spines, the webbing. That's all I remember, really. I don't, I, okay. I don't know if I remember limbs. I, I don't know. That's a good question. I do have the petroglyph book somewhere, but uh, God, that would take me weeks just to find it. I've got so well, many we, books. We, we got a long time. You can go. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, that, that's a big, um, I don't even know where the heck that is, but you can just Google it. Uh, petroglyphs, uh, Nanaimo, uh, sea serpent. I bet you'll come up. Okay. And then I will you'll do get. That. Yeah, because uh, so you know, I'm just gonna, go ahead. There's so much out there, you know. Yeah. So I was going to say, but you know, like some people, they have a dramatic experience, like with a Sasquatch or something, and then their life gets changed. But you've kind of been going through this all your life, kind of thing, and came up with from a family that was kind of like that. But still, I would like to ask you, how is your life? What is how do you think your life has been changed like from a, a normal person from from your insight and from your you know the um synchronicity and the magic that goes on with you every day how how has it shaped you you know as a person i used to hide it because i notice a lot of people when i mention what i my experience all like unless I really know who they are. They're like, yeah. And then the conversation ends there. Right. Like, and I feel all oh, that's not the person that, you know, so, and I used, so then I started hiding it. And then when I did that, I find out, I, God, why am I changing myself and my experiences? Because they don't want to hear it or maybe because they're not, um, we have them have, <sighs> You know, you have to share, right? And I thought, no, I'm going to share. Because the more you share, the more you hear, you receive. Yeah. Right? And then when I said, you know what? I'm not going to hide it. I'm just going to, I'm going to let it all hang out. And, to, you know, the best I can without seeming crazy. But telling people, you know, I got confirmation or uh, I did think about it it wasn't a hallucination or i kind of filter it out to, you know for myself too right do you think it's important for people to hear this kind of stuff that are open to it because it really does open up new paradigms of thought and possibility for them don't you think how can you oh. ask a question and answer at the same time i don't know i i'm good at it <laughs> <Could I? laughs> you set it up so there's no way she could disagree with you See, I told you I'm good at it. Anyway, continue. I got I got called on my on my shit. That's good. Uh, well, what was your question again? Uh, I forgot now. I, I'm so hurt, <laughs> but hurt. No, I was gonna I was gonna say, do no. Do you feel it's important to share this kind of stuff with people who are open to it? Because it does it does it it kind of like it. That's the reason for we have the show. It kind of like verifies their experiences, and it also um can open people who are a little open-minded you know to to possibilities that they can explore <laughs> you know what the government doesn't want us to share that's why i'm sharing exactly 
Okay. And because the more we share, the more we know, and knowledge is forbidden, right? We're not allowed to enlighten ourselves. So the more, see, the government hates us. The, 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 they, they just don't want us to talk about it. So you go conspiracy theory, blah, blah, blah. Give uh, us yeah, labels. Exactly. Well, you know what? To hell with them. I, yeah. I talk about it. You know, I've even had correction officers and wardens even talk about experiences they've had. You never would have thought. But once you open up like I do, you go, you know what? I can tell her my story. So I take their story like I have and tell you the story. And yeah. the chain goes on and on and on. And it's yeah. like you spread it. And like government hates that. You well, know you know, what? In, yeah. you know, in the old in the old days, the, the people used to be burned at the stake for, for telling these kind of stories and doing this kind of stuff. That's yeah. how much they don't like it. I know. I know. You still and they're doing that. They're doing that today. By just, none like, of those, none of those beings, none of the people you see in the near death experience, no angels, no dragons, no Sasquatch, <laughs> no goat head man. None of those guys got any government. They just were <laughs> mother nature you know what i mean and they're manifest their own thing and that just kind of cuts out the whole king government kind of thing cuts them right out of the picture well the government is satanic they lie they cheat they steal well you know come on you just what are you serious (laughs) you gotta be joking (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's like it's like watching the circus man it's like you know come on it's almost funny the comedy clown show like the government you know it's like you know you can't travel vacation because there's this killer bug but yet they go to the bahamas and bermuda living it up saying they're at home with a hot chocolate all cooped up in a blanket there was that one politician that did that Oh my God, he had a fake scenery. Oh, you know, I was taught in school. I had a real good social studies teacher who always said the politicians were corrupt. And and I thought he was, I just loved what he taught. You know, it was like, there are puppets on a string. And I really took that to heart. And I, you know, even though my mom's saying it constantly, don't ever trust the government so i was well uh, i knew shit was going down i sensed it i knew it but i think now it's it's it, the good news is people are starting to wake up yeah right? it, because yeah be, because of the media and even though they try to suppress it the internet all this stuff they can't really hide it like they used to i mean people are waking up in droves well my philosophy is start questioning things and then you know yeah. they don't like questions right you know why because you're gonna they don't they can't even answer it they don't they won't answer it you ever notice like oh you ever see, you ever, have you ever seen true dung answer a question it's a democracy and he changes the whole thing that's what he goes it's a democracy blah 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 and i'm like god yes or no <laughs> Like they should, you know what? They should be held accountable. If you can't answer the question, yes or no, we're going to take our answer for it and, and answer it for you, right? Well, you know what though? <laughs> and when you look at stuff as like put the polarity, good and evil or whatever, it's all the balance and all this stuff. The thing is, is that actually, if you look at it from how, from a, we should look at everything from sort of a positive point of view and whatever and deal with things with with love not with acceptance but the thing is is that these guys are are so over the top that people are waking up in droves so they're actually doing good work in the sense that they are waking us up to like wait a minute these guys are full of full of shit like you know i mean they're doing good work by growing horns and turning red that's what the well yeah but 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 we're recognizing (laughs) it though when when we recognize it, that's the good that that's the that's the benefit of it, right? Yeah. Like you know, yeah. people are saying, "Wait a minute, this is bullshit." Well, yeah, it's and I think the Sasquatch feels sorry for us. I feel that they know that they feel like you. you some people have been duped here, 
and and you know it's yeah but it's, the, it's the hypnosis part of it right because they it's, don't have any government they don't have judgment like that they don't have division they don't have uh mm -hmm. fear or control by fear so they're trying to they're trying to get that message out to all of us or those that they reach to uh and and once you get that message and you understand that and you especially the fear thing then you can't really be touched so yeah that's yeah. their that's that's the message that they're, they're teaching me and that i'm trying I read to talk our con about. i read our constitution a couple of days ago <laughs> i was shocked out of my mind right this is we the people in order to form a more perfect union blah 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 right all that's sort of really nice at the top it says we the people it's gigantic letters right we the people and then it says, here's the, here's the powers that we have as government. And it goes on to list all the powers that they have that we don't have. And at the very end, we get this vote, right? They have all these powers, and we get to vote for who, who has the power over us. That's it. It's a, like a slave, uh, like a, 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 a description of the qualities of slave servitude, right? Yeah. It's completely, you know, and, everybody, and, and we've been sold, my whole life is like, Oh, the Constitution is great. It's the greatest thing since Swiss cheese. And aren't you glad that we got a Constitution? And it's like the Constitution is nothing but uh, their business plan of how to enslave humanity. That's all it is. You yeah. know, I like that. I like we have, that. We have no right of refusal. We have no recourse against them. We have no way to get rid of them. Right. It's just it's it's the most corrupt thing that I've ever heard. And, and all of the and then we spread that constitutional republic kind of thing around the world you, you know you know the, you know the thing i like best about what you said there is swiss cheese it's got a it's full of holes <laughs> full of holes yeah <laughs> yeah anyway it's like a clown joke show really it is you a know? Clown clo clo and there's nothing sacred about it it was like do we really need look i'm sitting in my house in savannah and in savannah's got a corrupt and, and then and then Savannah's sitting in the middle of, of Georgia, and Georgia's sitting in the middle of the United States. I don't need any of that stuff, right? I'm doing just fine. I can go to the grocery store and cook my, you know, I don't, there's no government needed. It's a complete illusion. You know, we're sitting here talking on the Zoom across yeah. continental, right? We don't, where, where's the government needed here? It's not, not needed at all. Well, you know what I don't like is if you go on <laughs> Facebook and YouTube, the, the censorship. Oh. It, I'm always fact checked, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I've, I've been careful, right? Because, you know, I've had a few warnings, but, you know. No, you? Yeah. I, uh. I, I used to be on the high school debate team, and I love a good debate. Like, I like to, I like questions, and I want to hear your point. Like, you, if you say what, if, you know, like, in your debate in the government or whatever you're debating, like the government won't answer, or Facebook or these corporations or pharmaceutical, they won't answer your question. They defer it and de te like deflect any answer that you know. They can't even give you. Um, see, even when I was a kid, I'm like, why did why do grown ups act like that? Why do they? It just boggles my imagination. Like, why can't you answer a question for God's sake? True. I know I would love a lie detector test on them. I, I you know, <laughs> <laughs> I would love oh let's bring it on. They demand that of us, right? If we're on trial or if we're in court, they, they can ask for a lie detector test on us. Why not a politician? Why because not? We don't have a right of recourse because we're chattel. I know. We have no right of refusal, no, no eviction notice, and there's nothing like that. No. And they, they, what they did is they burned all the places that make pitch for, pitchforks and 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 um, you know, well, those torches. They don't make them anymore. Yeah, yeah. They used to they used to make riot pitchforks and 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 uh, torches. Not anymore. Oh, I like what the Vikings did back in the day. Is they charged with a big log up on the castle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. I'm like, that is what they need to do to Parliament. Just get one giant big log and just go boom. We should, we got to awake our inner Viking, eh? Yes. Well, that's we the Viking you know, in me. That, you know, we, I, we, we, yeah. That's the genetic part 
it's hard to sometimes restrain. Uh, I, I've learned how to do it, you know, but there are times when the bullshit goes over the top and you go, <laughs> you know. Well, Dutch did something really interesting. I think it was in 1746 or something like that. They took their, uh, their whatever it was, their prime minister, and they didn't like him. So they took him and killed him and ate him. I'm just saying, you know, you got to have your options open, you know, <laughs> options that then, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you know, push comes to shove. You know, push comes to shove. You can only push someone down. Just it's like a dog people. world. That's what they, that's where we're being ruled. So, you know. Well, hopefully, hopefully it all falls down soon because this is, you know, imagine having another 300 years of it slogging through the mud like this. You know what I think? What's going to happen? And this is what I feel. It's just going to hit the fan. Did you notice all these UFOs are apparently shot down and Trudeau ordered it shot down? No, no, true done. Yeah. Well, number one was the videos. Every military plane has a video on it. <laughs> oh, uh, and where's the debris? But uh, covering their ass, because what I think, I think <clears throat> out of the universe, I think the aliens, whether from inner earth or outer earth, they feel that negative vibration and they're coming down and they're going to set things straight. And I think that's what's going to happen. It's well, going to... I also think that we have we have free choice, so we have to. They, I, I think that they will assist us. I'm not sure if they're going to come down and clean house, but I think that. They, but I think they're trying to wake us up so that we can do it. Uh, myself, but um, yeah. you know why? Why is this? Why is this conscious shift, and why are so many people waking up these days? And and so much synchronicity and magic is going on in the world because we're, we're because that shift that change is coming. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's not by a coincidence. Like I said, the Sasquatch, they don't have a sense. They, they don't have linear time. The past, present, and future are all the same to them. That's how they can manipulate all mm -hmm. these things and whatever we talk about. But the thing is, is they're not going to invest all this teaching and all this love and everything <laughs> to somebody who's just going to be going down the toilet. They know that we're they, they know we're coming out of this darkness. And I, yeah. I and I and I feel that we are coming out of it. I can, and I'm just getting a little bit of nudge right now. Um, yeah. I, 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 I really do. So I, I think uh, it, it is a time of great change. And I'm very optimistic, even in the midst of darkness. I, uh, I'm very, very optimistic. Who knows? Well, maybe we get the dragons on our side. Imagine that it'd be the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force, and then there's the dragons, right? That would be great. You know, dragons are flood, you know, spitting out uh, fire that goes like 20 miles. <laughs> Yeah, that would be something. <laughs> like, like, uh, what was that? Yeah. Avatar. Like Avatar. <laughs> Only better with dragons. You never well, know. They had dragons in Avatar. They were riding dragons, weren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. But I'm talking about the big kind that, that uh, you know, just blow on a tank and it'll melt. Well, <laughs> in, um, there was a, uh, one of the best stories I've ever heard was my favorite is called Soya six or seven space Soyuz mission uh, yeah. oh, Soya and green no no it's oh, yeah. the russian word Soya or okay in space Thanks, like apollo is their word number six or seven i think it was number six space mission the russians went out there and uh all of them on there's like half dozen of them they all saw a giant i mean giant like hundreds of miles big like golden angel like with wings or beings i don't know whether they're bio bio beings or astral beings but they all saw it and it was there was a communication mind and mind speak and they didn't hurt them but it was such a like they all seen it but when they came back they all science that they all said oh it was a hallucination 
well, here's my theory. How can seven, a half a dozen people all have the same hallucination, <coughs> right? There's yeah. something out there. So that huge, that big, <coughs> and that, and like angelic, it was uh, such a good force. I mean, can you imagine that came down? Pow, what, you know? Everyone's gonna have to behave themselves, right? Like all the politicians gonna scurry like rats, you know? They can't keep doing. It's gonna come. What goes up must come down, right? Yep. I think that's it what I think. Swings. Yeah, as a pendulum swings. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and the more we get over fear of it, the better we are, because you know. Oh. That's the one thing that they try to do is control it with fear. When you got no fear, when you know you're an eternal being and this is just uh, like a drop in the bucket of eternity kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, how can they really affect us? So we, we got to stand, stand with that, stand with that truth and that strength and, uh, and just like, you know, do your shit. We don't care. Just play your little game. <laughs> You're not, yeah. you're not gonna... I think I think we're going to have to go back to a council kind of a, a thing I and mean, a council, a local council that you can sit ba belly to belly and face to face with. And then that would be our form of government and the council's not fixed. It could be elected for anything that comes up. I, I, I just don't see it because, uh, you know, you, yeah. you don't need a uh, a driving coach to sit in the back seat while you drive. You know what I mean? <laughs> Once you learn how to drive, that's it. You don't need a coach or a, or a powers or an authority, right? That's the same thing with it's the same thing with the government. Once you learn how to live a life and you're not going to hurt anybody, you don't need that. I don't need personally. Don't need the police. I don't need the mayors. I don't need any of that kind of stuff, right? You don't need them. They're not needed. Yeah. We we're surviving quite well without them. Oh yeah. I don't know, the minute the government does or says anything, it's like, oh, no, you, you know? Oh, it's... no, right. <laughs> we heard about that little town in Mexico, right? That, that uh, they all the people got together and said, no more politicians and no more none, right? So they kicked them out. They actually kicked them out of the, out of the town. <laughs> and then they had, those guys are tough down there. So they had a couple of guys with like, uh, you know, M16s and stuff walking around and then sometimes the politicians would try to come back in and then run them back out those wow. people the town became prosperous and the crime rate dropped to zero wow yeah because everybody knew they had to take care of themselves right and that there wasn't a there wasn't an official police force or anything so you know I bet you're not seeing I, I bet you're not seeing that on the mainstream news they shouldn't oh. certainly wouldn't want people to know that <laughs> Keep you know? us in the dark. I know you notice that you don't see people uprising on TV like you do on the internet, like say in France and Israel and uh, all these people said, I've had enough in Amsterdam, you know? Yeah, Just, there was all kinds of riots and, and protests and whatever going on in the world. And, 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 you know, the, the government or the uh, news media was just trying to represent it like just a few fringe wackos doing this but they just weren't talking about it then you know they they want to minimize everything to make to make us think that everything's normal you know and like yeah so. and then you got the prime minister calling people names i think that's really bad that's pretty low that's pretty disgusting and you know i was taught in school you don't call people names like don't play dirty in the sandbox and then he he's goes and does it what kind of leader is that you're supposed to set an example for yourself right and uh you know i guess it's ego and power and you know but like i said what goes not, up not being held accountable yeah they, they don't they're not being held accountable so they, they they can just pretty well free feel they have free will the only guys who are being held accountable are the guys who are going against the system i know you know I then yeah. all then all the rules of being held accountable and you can't do that and all that stuff suddenly it applies but it doesn't apply to the guys <laughs> you know the the guys in power because you know they yeah. got free reign right so anyway i yeah. hope we don't get this show kicked off uh, because money can't, we we a, money, a money cap of like uh like 100 million dollars after you make we, 100 million dollars you got to give everything else to the poor 
And did we yeah. say, did, did we see any uh, algorithm words that were going to get kicked off, Beans? Because I had one show removed, but that was because I said the uh, the bad uh, Hulk thing. Oh. Whatever. We, I think we'll be okay, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, if, if, if the government ever catches wind of this show, boy, they'll be... <laughs> we'll be on the... We were, we were staying within the lines. We didn't say kill, the word kill. And politician in the same sentence. We didn't say that. Okay. You just did. <laughs> you just <Okay>. did now. <laughs> or, or, or the dissolution of the government by by a what do they call it when 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 a, a state secedes from the union? Is where they the secession. Yeah. But isn't it sad that it's come to that? Like the censorship that. We, we even have to do that? That's good. The good old USA has got their fingers on all media, and that's the CIA and the FBI are, are actually on the board of directors of all the media companies, including Google and all and all that kind of So that was that whole, that was what that whole uh, Twitter was all about, is oh. when Elon Musk got that, he kicked out all the people who are basically uh, pawns for the government. Yeah. The government was one who's saying we don't want this and we don't want that, and right. And the reason why they didn't like the uh, the uh, crap nineteen or what was how they said it crap nineteen. They didn't yeah. want to said about that is because the government funded it and the government approved it approved it, right? That's so, you know, I know it's yeah you, yeah. It what? blows my mind, bro. I was I was I was on a, on the on a, what do you call it? On the, on the internet from almost from the beginning, right? In the, in the 90s, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Whenever whenever it started cranked up and uh, that would, it had modems that were like in the, in the megabytes instead of gigabytes. <laughs> but anyway, and all these startup companies were coming, coming on, right? And then had like uh, MySpace and Facebook wasn't even started yet, right? And I'm thinking, okay, now we've had Facebook for like 10 or 15 years, however long it's been. And there's not been any other any other uh, uh, internet connection like that. There's not been any other applications like that. So there's Google and and YouTube and and yep. Facebook, right? And then and then uh, who's that guy who sells the books? What's his name, Brian? Amazon. Jeff Bezos. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. I think we should wrap wrap, wrap it up because Brian's getting hungry. <laughs> no, I'm fine. But uh, but you know we haven't go. You know that we've been going on for four hours. Has it really yeah, it's, been? It's that time long? to say bye, bye. No, it's been three and a half. <laughs> oh, well, we started. We, we were in, oh, doing yeah. the pregame show too, right? Four, it's, oh. four hours. it's four hours now. <laughs> the pregame show. Well, I usually <laughs> include that. I usually include that. And by the way, if you want to watch the pregame show, everybody, <laughs> tune into my uh, Sasquatch BC, the true story channel on YouTube. Yeah. Where I have every pork and bean show edited, and there's uh, all the behind the behind the scenes stuff that you you miss out on. And I think we got belly right dancing. That. We got belly dancing in the pre-show, so you gotta gotta watch this. Yeah. That's oh, funny. you should have done some belly dancing on the pre-show. <laughs> well, why not? Well, because it's, the pre-show is over with. We, Listen, we Brian. Here, here, this look on the we bright side. It. We we can cut this thing in half, and then then. Uh, Whichever, wherever it has the most politically politically uh, incorrect is, you'll know where, where it is. Is the first half or the second half? Well, if we get taken uh, off, if they if they cut us off, I'll just cut off the last part where we start saying how wonderful the government is. <laughs> By the way, I pay my taxes. I'm a I'm a on on you know I'm a obedient citizen, and I love all you guys. I was just joking. <laughs> See, There's keep up place. the good work. You guys are swell. Keep it up. Keep up the good yeah. work. Yeah, fantastic. Is there anything you wanted to say, Suzanne, before we close it out? To, to, to the to the wonderful pork and beans audience and hi everybody and be true to yourself and spread the news because the more you spread, the more we know. I like nice to have peanut yeah, yeah. I spread the peanut butter really thick on my sandwiches. That makes so me just, think ooh, about that makes me think about tuna fish sandwich. I gotta spread a tuna fish sandwich. Mmm, that sounds good. Okay, so 
Yeah, maybe I'm going to go and get something to eat. Maybe I'll be go ahead. Tuna dragon sandwich. That'd be pretty good. The tuna dragon. Oh, well, it's been great. You know, I really enjoyed. I enjoy. I really. I want to thank you for coming on. I really enjoyed the the entire show. I especially enjoyed. Well, I enjoyed all of it, but I really enjoyed that uh, that uh, sea monster. <laughs> Although I guess if we're not going to call the Sasquatch monsters, we shouldn't say sea monster either. That sea bean. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that because it had so much correlation with the Sasquatch, the shape shifting thing, and all that. It, it, you know, it was all very, so many similarities. I just found that fascinating. But uh, anyway, thank you so much, uh, Suzanne. Or should we call you Taco Bell now? How about Taco Bell? Okay, it was Taco Bell. Think, we'll we'll probably you have you come, on again. You should come back when you see a, a Ter Doctor, Ter Doctor, right? When I've heard of people it. seeing them. You know. When you see one of those guys flying around, come come back to on the show. I actually, I actually, somebody told me the other day they saw one. I've heard somebody for, saw, for real. saw a flock of them, and six of them came out of a portal. Ooh! Wow! Wow! With the big pointy thing on the back oh, and the big oh. point. Yeah. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! Well, That's just, amazing. To, to me, it makes perfect sense. Let's say they're all living in the next level up. The yeah. high vibration, and they're just flying around, right? And what if they what if they fly into a portal and come into this world? So absolutely, know, pro absolutely you know, possible, probable, yeah. even plausible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they, 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 that's slow. We're not supposed to be here. They go into another portal, and they, that's it. Little visitation, multi dimension, like portals and stuff like that. I yeah, it's a whole other. I mean, that's probably what that dragon did, did. It just came up out of a portal and went for a little look around. Yeah, yeah. Be, so, yeah. So, so here's your homework, Taco Bell. Okay. Spell <laughs> B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Going right on another great big huge list of stuff, <laughs> and we'll have you back on sometime. And Okay. Or or you can just come on. Sometimes we have a panel show and whatever. You can come and join us there and uh, yeah, whatever you, you're part, you part of the, the family now. Normal, normal. You make the right. normal, normal. All right, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, and hopefully in September you get to meet my wife and uh, and all the crazy Sasquatch people that attend my gathering because you, you live in the area. You and your husband want to come, right? Yeah, it's nice. Curious yeah, George, we'd love to. Curious George, I'd like to end the show Curious by George. saying Sasquatch and dragons make the world a better place. We need more Sasquatch and dragons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They make the world a better place. I, I to totally believe that. Oh, yeah. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Right? Sure. You got that we, right. Usually, we usually sing on the show, but Mr. Beans well, isn't it. singing much today. Mr. Beans ain't singing much today, but anyway. I am so beautiful to me, can't you see? I'm everything <laughs> I for, I'm everything I need. I am so beautiful to me. <laughs> yeah, all you beautiful people, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, uh, Suzanne Reed, Taco Bell. Thanks, Taco Debbie. Bell. <laughs> yeah, AKA Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> you have to tell your you have to tell George that your name is Taco Bell now. Oh, he'll go, who made that up? You like me? Like <laughs> you'll say that to me. I don't know. I was assigned Taco Bell. Uh, I I'm, I usually am the one that makes up the nicknames because I'm kind of disturbed. <laughs> I like that one. I really like it. Yeah. I come a ringing. All right. Okay. So on behalf of Port Cunningham <laughs> and the world's handsomest man, Frank Oliver Beans, this has been the Pork and Beans Show. Thank you, Suzanne Reed, Aka Taco Bell. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We love you all, and uh, we've got like another 12 or 13 shows in the can lined up. So, <laughs> Also, if, if, if you want to come on the show or you know anybody who would like to come on the show, okay. let us know. All Subscribe right. to our YouTube channel, uh, okay. Sasquatch BC, The True Story. Jo join, join the Pork and Bean Show group. We're, we're trying to get to 2,000 because nobody likes us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you get to see the world's handsomest man more regularly. There you go. You be under my thumb because I'm an ad man. I'm the <laughs> well, well, thanks for having people. me on. It was a pleasure. See? 
This is the first thing you've done like this, right? Or is it? It's the very first. I think I was on one show years ago. It was a radio, not a Zoom. But this is the first Zoom thing I've ever done in my life. So I was a bit nervous, to, I'll be honest, and stressed out. But could being a technophobe, but now that I, it's like I, I want a medal. I, I did Zoom. <laughs> You, you didn't you didn't show it you didn't show it you were really good and I, so this is also your favorite podcast you've done oh yeah it's and it's funny too it's knowledgeable i, I think you got enough stuff for the uh, start of a really good book and if uh, and i think if you sat down to write one you'd be like famous me yeah you could be famous like us like oh. us yeah oh god you know what i i was thinking god i got enough material it's like for sure, yeah. I mean, you've had, well, a, you've, you. had you've had a, a a miraculous, exemplary. You bet you never thought of it, but you have an exemplary life. You're an example of a magical person. Well, thank you. Thank I agree. You. Compliment. I can even see the fairy pixie dust fly, floating <laughs> around you, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. I feel honored. It was so nice to be on the show and talk to like-minded people. I tell you, it's such a breath of fresh air. Thank you very much. So I'm going to edit this. Okay. I will send you over the uh, YouTube edits and you can show you, you and your husband can sit down and get the popcorn going and, the, and, and watch the pork and bean show. Oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You. See you, everybody. Thanks for oh. thanks for showing up. We'll see you again uh, next week. Who do we got next week, Beans? Can we say we got, somebody. No, we got somebody? It's a let it's me a, just, let me let, 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 I know that. Oh, is it William Lunsford? Is that who it is? Yeah, it's coming up not this Thursday. Week, isn't it? Not next week. It's like two, three more days or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's on Thursday. So on Thursday we got William, Lund or is it Wednesday? Thursday. This Thursday, we got William Lunchford coming up. So, then on May 4th, sure we've there. got the uh, She Squatchers. Oh, that'll be good. Oh, yeah. The she Squatchers. Yeah, they're, 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 they're more famous than we are. We invite the famous people on to try to boost us up. That's oh. hard to believe that, that they're more famous than us, but I guess it's possible. <laughs> well, you, we're, we're both in a delusion, so it's hard to tell. We don't have an accurate, <laughs> you know, an accurate compass. Yeah, true enough. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, uh, you're famous now, Suzanne. So, thank just, you. Just send me the check in the mail. Okay. <laughs> How much is it for? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Let's let, let, let's let's just forgo the check. Okay. You know, you'll be just be eternally grateful. We'll we'll accept that. And goodwill. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's fun hanging out with you guys. Yeah. We'll see you. Okay. Yep. I'll I'll send you the video when it's done. So thanks for, for stopping awesome. in. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Okay.